good midnight to you. Angels are the beings who sang together when the foundation of the earth was laid. They fractured and fell when man came into being. They who guarded the gates of Eden, set out for the fall of Sodom, guided the Most High's chosen and revealed His Son, a courageous choir, the face of justice, and the writers of righteousness, dealers with death. Version 1 of this video is an introduction to the concept of angels and how they correlate to the Tekken universe. This video, however, will be diving deeper into the concepts of angels and highlighting the parallels to the story of Tekken and its relation to biblical scripture. With that being said, angels are mentioned 108 times in the OT, aka the Old Testament, and 65 times in the New Testament. Each person is set to have an angel assigned to them. Allegedly, there's over 100 million angels. As I mentioned in the last Design DNA video, a third of them fell with Lucifer. Angels are split between nine ranks. These positions are also referred to as choirs. The reason for these known categories is because each type possesses a certain significance and role. Some are more powerful than others. As we climb up the chain of command and get closer to the Most High, the expectation rises to greater heights. Ninth choir. These are the angels that deal with the physical world constantly. These are the angels that are depicted in human form. At birth, each person is assigned a guardian angel. This concept is depicted in the intro of Tekken 2. Kazuya here is accompanied by the devil as well as angel. Angels could also be guided into your life through strangers or close companions. June could be seen as a guide for Kazuya out of the dark side. Angels go through spiritual warfare as well, hence the concept of unknown, but that topic will be further examined in the dogman vid and her correlation to the unknown. However, it's speculated that this rank of angel is the one that saw over Jesus during his time on this plane. In Genesis, Abraham has pitched his tent in the plains of Mamre. During the midday, he is sitting at the door of his tent when the Most High approaches. Chapter 18 reads, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them, and he bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. The Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. But then Abraham approached them and said, Will you sweep away the righteous? With the wicked? the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? And as the story goes, the Most High would listen to this request. The ninth rank angels were able to blind the predators that were committing the great sin in Sodom. They fulfilled their roles as protectors and guardians. The red verses in the story of Sodom show how angels manifest themselves into human form. They can interact with our physical world. They can eat, drink, digest, and even sleep without cause or concern at any moment. Tekken could take this plot line and incorporate it into the lore of Tekken, seeing that Angel was a featured character at one point in time. <laughs> Angels being a man's image is something that is expressed thoroughly in the context of Genesis. We are a reflection of his holiness and divine being, which also applies to angels. Seven this is the next choir that I want to cover due to the fact that it's also very accurate to the role that Angel played in Tekken. The seventh choir, known as the Angels of Principalities, the mainstream definition for principality, a state ruled by a prince. However, within the Christian lore, these angels are not described as such. These angels are there to encourage people to pray and practice spiritual beliefs and disciplines. This is so the individual can grow closer to the Most High. These beings are also responsible for the enlightenment of the arts and sciences, inspiring people by responding to prayer. Principalities also oversee the various nations on earth, helping to deliver wisdom to national leaders in times of hardship to give them a greater sense of discernment. What's even more interesting about this choir, these are some of the angels who are thought to have fallen with the sin of man, which correlates to the unknown and angel dynamic. June very well could have been an angel, which would make sense seeing that Jin has angel-like qualities in his DNA. If June is a fallen angel of some sort and causes Nephilim, it makes a lot of sense in theory anyway. Which leads me into the next choir, that being the Choir of Powers, the Sixth Choir. 
These are the angels that engage in spiritual warfare, hence angel interacting with not only cause and unknown, but also ogre and true ogre, which are all forms of demons in the Christian context. Kaz being the Satan or the retcon version is Nephilim with the devil gene and genetic code unknown being dogmen or the encinocephaly and ogre being based on pagan deities also from other cultures. These angels are also responsible for assisting humans in their quest to overcome temptation and sin, giving them encouragement and reminding them that good always overcomes evil. We see this clear as day with angels ending in Tekken Tag Tournament 1. However, the energy behind these evil forces are extremely persistent. The same red dragon that's mentioned in the book of Revelations is sort of reanimated in the intro of Tekken Tag Tournament 2. True Ogre might have similar design DNA to the red dragon mentioned in this verse. And there appeared another wandered in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And as the story goes, a third of heaven fell out with their leader. The archangel Michael had other angels under him fighting. I mention those stories because Angel was battling Kazuya and Ogre at one point. Now, we know that's not canon of course, but those themes are definitely prevalent in Tekken and with June returning in Tekken 8, these plot points are possible now, depending on how detailed Namco wants to get with it of course. Now, what's even more interesting is the fact that some suggest that those are the choirs of angels who sided with Lucifer. In a weird way, if you think about it, if June slept with Kaz, and if she was indeed a fallen angel or had angelic powers or responsibilities, then she indirectly sided with the Satan or Nephilim perhaps. And then it's almost like you gotta ask yourself, if you look at it in the context of the Christian lore and mythology, was Jen a mistake? Was June actually supposed to procreate with Kaz or was her mission to just save him from himself, meaning given in to the Satan, makes you think. The principalities and powers, meaning angels, were also said to tempt nations with certain technology that was not intended for human consumption, a la G Corporation, Mishima Zaibatsu. I'm using video game references, but the scripture is referencing real life scenarios, of course, but as they say, art imitates life. The cherubim have the head of a man amongst their animal counterparts. Angels may share his image, but they do not have his likeness. This is what separates them. As we discussed in the Angel Design DNA V1, angels do have a side that can bring wrath to anything that angers them with indecency. For the next category, we move on to the third choir. Thrones. Thrones are also known as the symbols of the Most High's justice and authority. These are most likely the creatures that are in Nope, or at least they were designed or inspired by the angels in the Bible. These beings are often mistaken as aliens sometimes as well. Paul mentions these beings in Colossians. Quote, quote, For him, by all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. As a symbol of the Most High's throne, these are also said to be the beings mentioned in Revelations. Quote, then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, as and he shall reign forever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the day that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. And then the temple of God opened in heaven and the ark his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightings, noises, thunderings, and earthquake and a great hell. For greater context, we have to look at the book of Ezekiel. Now, the book of Ezekiel is very prophetic. It is here we get a very detailed description of these beings. And when I look, behold the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, another wheel 
by another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was as the color of the barrel stone. And as their appearance, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went, and their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about even the wheels that they four had. This is key, seeing that the thrones and the cherub are closely linked together. There's a theory that the former identity of Satan, aka Lucifer, not the Satan, but Lucy's former identity, was that of a cherubim, which lets you know how powerful he was. For context, we have to delve further into the book of Ezekiel. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out of you and it consumed you. And I reduced you to the ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All the nations who knew you are appalled at you. You have to come to a horrible end and will be no more. Now, I say all that to just say this. It's clear that Ezekiel is prophesizing these past events that have already occurred. The fate of the devil himself is what's being described as pride has entered his heart. As they say, pride comes before the fall. Now, Jin in Tekken 8 has a similar story to the fallen angel. June, in this case, acts as the role of the ninth rank angel. In Tekken 2, Kaz literally had a ninth rank angel that was blatantly with him. Jin is in a similar role, seeing that his devil gene has taken a form of his own, and June seems to be the one that is attempting to guide him into the light. It's like Tekken 2, but the 2.0 version, the more fleshed out version. See, Tekken 2 comes from an OT perspective, in a way, and Tekken 8 is almost like the New Testament mixed with Christian mythology and art history. June is most likely not there in the physical at the time of her being shown in the trailer. But if Namco wanted to take the route of June having an angelic quality about her, then her disappearance doesn't have to be explained so thoroughly. Angels come and they go. They take different forms, different human-like forms as well. If you wanted to make June end up being Angel and the Dogman with Unknown, that is definitely possible as we talked about before or earlier in this design DNA. Angels go through spiritual warfare and that could have been a case that happened with June. Now, is Namco actually going to do that? I'm not sure. And do they have to? Not necessarily. But if they wanted to retcon Unknown, that is a plot point that they could take and who knows? I would say Namco has definitely surprised us with the story as of lately. They've done more for the story than we expected, so you never know. But with that being said, you already know what it is, man. You are now tapped in, tuned in to the AAM Network. Maybe.